Okay, gang, I told you this entire week was going to be powerful. And here I've come to a promise again, because we are looking at Wellness Wednesday, and you're going to hear from five more in our community. So I am so excited for you to meet them. I'm going to do just one quick uh, screen share before we begin uh, so that you can see uh, what we're about to do. Of course, we are five days away, five days left, you guys, for the Positively Unstoppable Challenge. So that's why you're hearing from all of these people in our family here that are in the challenge, just starting the challenge, and you're going to be able to figure out why maybe this could be a good fit for you as well. Um, and here's the five you get to hear from for Wellness Wednesday. And you're, each one of them are going to introduce themselves, um, and you're going to get to know a little bit more about them. So we are going to begin this with, uh, first of all, you guys, thank you for coming on. Not everybody said yes, I'm just saying. Um, some said they're you know, a little scared to do it, and so I don't know. Either you guys were just real trusting or just whatever, but thank you guys for coming on. So we are going to move into, I'm going to... Um, start with Gord, have him share his name, a little bit about his why and how, what brought you to this point, Gord? Hi, well, I'm Gord Mitchell. I'm 60 and I started doing DDPY basically when my health just fell apart. I had a stroke, I have arthritis in both my knees and my youngest is very high on the autism spectrum. And basically, he'll be living with us until we can't physically take care of him anymore. So in order to take care of him, I had to start taking care of myself. So I first started with yoga, which led to YRG, which turned into DDP yoga, now DDPY. I went from not being able to lift my legs more than a foot off the ground to be able to hold it over my head. So this is pretty powerful stuff. It's definitely made a positive impact on my life, and I do it every single day. There's just no stopping. Wow. And I love your reason about being a caregiver to your son. I'm telling you what, that takes a very special special parent to do that. That's amazing. And I have seen pictures. Hopefully you've all seen pictures of Gord lifting his leg way up over his head. And I'm like, oh my word. <laughs> Very cool, Gord. It's quite, quite clear you've been with us for Thank a long you. time. Yeah. Historically, you've been with DDP a long time. Yeah. Uh, well, today was day 1,544 in a row but I had been doing it for a few years before I started my streak. Wow. Wow. I love the rich history because I'm a newbie here, you know, two years in and wow. I love that. Well, now you guys are going to get to hear from Bob. You may not see his cameras having technical difficulties with the zoom program, but Bob is here and he's going to talk to you. You saw his picture. It's down below here posted as well. So Bob, tell us a little bit about your why. Um, well, I'm Bob Fridley, and in May, I will be 64. So um, I started DDP nine years ago. Um, a buddy of mine sent me our first video. Um, I had been medically retired from cutting meat after a 30-year career, and uh, I have been battling MS since 1982. Um, I was diagnosed in 99, and um, so my why is I'm trying to stay out of wheelchair. Um, um, in order for me to function and to be with my kids and to function at church, um, and, um, just to, uh, have a quality of life, I needed something and, uh, DP yoga, so, uh, it, it really fit all the bills. My, uh, <laughs> uh, my, uh, neurologist says that I am the 
um, multiple sclerosis poster child because of DDP. Wow. So that that's where I'm at. Oh my word. Bob, what a what a testimony of fighting and overcoming. I, that's about as deep a why as I think I've ever heard of. Um, wow, thank you, thank you, my goodness. Uh, what about you, Candace? You want to share with us your why? Well, my name's Candace, and I'm fifty something. I've been doing a DDP wise uh, seriously since July twelfth of twenty twenty one. I was at a point. Um, with herniated discs and uh, narrowing of the spinal column and nerve damage and arthritis and all this mess that um, I was at the point where I was dragging my left leg. I could barely walk. I had to use a walk stick slash, because I don't want to call it a cane, the walking stick. Uh, but but um, when I started doing the deep while originally my while with my husband and my two boys who are adults, um, my oldest son lived uh, six hours away at the time in Ohio, and I couldn't get in the car and ride that far. I couldn't, you know, my husband likes to go on walks and hikes and different things, which we've done since we were married, before we were married, and I couldn't do all that anymore. So I gained all this weight, and it was just, I was in pain constantly. Um, but, you know, I've lost a, a good deal of that weight now, and I'm can do the hikes and the walks and ride in the car and all that. Um, so I had to come up with a little bit of a new why. And my, my why is me, but not just the me that I am right now. It's for my future me. I look at uh, you, Pam, and Diane, uh, the things y'all can do. And, you know, uh, Diane's like 20 years older than I am. I think you're like 15 years older than I am. It's it's amazes me the things you can do. So, as I like to tell Diane, when I grow up, I want to be like you guys. Um, I want to be the, the non typical, you know, 60, 70, 80 year old, 90 year old, whatever. I just, I'm doing this, the DDPY, it is for my, like I said, not only myself now, but my future self. Right. It absolutely, like DDP says to us, it holds back the hands of time. I mean, I honestly feel 15 to 20 years younger. And tomorrow I will be turning 69. So it, that's quite a gift to have been a part of this. You know, I'm just kind of envious that I wasn't in as long as Gord was, but I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm grateful. Okay, Jamie, let's hear your story, sweet one. Okay, I'm Jamie Kappas and I'm 59, will be 60 this year. And about two years ago, I noticed the mobility you know, things coming up. And then I fell December of 21 and sprained my ankle really bad. And that took forever to come back from and stuff. And I've just noticed that like, I couldn't walk as like everybody else says, I couldn't walk mobility. And like, uh, our, we live in a hundred year old house and we have those steps that are so steep that they were hard. Get, they can still be hard some days to go up, but just, and I've been doing my one year, I looked, my one year anniversary is coming up that I Subscribe to the app. April 11th will be my anniversary. But consistently, I had decided, I had turned 59. I thought, okay, you've got to decide. You either got to start doing something, Jamie, for yourself, or you will not be able to take care of yourself and somebody will have to take care of you. And so I had decided in December, I always try to come up with a word that in December that's going to be for the next year. Well, I decided that I was going, to, I didn't come up with a word, but I decided my daughter had introduced me to DD, DDPY last April. And I thought, this is the year I am going to do it. And I'm going to be consistently because I would do it very sporadically last year. And so uh, I think I signed, I started hearing about this challenge thing right, right before New Year's. Didn't even know what it was really. Yeah. And so I went, okay. I figured out how to sign up and then I started hearing about what I was supposed to do. And I thought, Oh, what did I just do? Okay. And so I thought, okay, fine. I'll figure it out. I'll get my daughter to help me. Well, she's not doing it. And so that's why I'm doing it is just, you know, I don't want to lose the mobility. And it just in three months of consistency, this is week 13 for me of my, I'm going to finish my first program this week. 
of my 13 weeks. And just in 13 weeks, I can climb those steep stairs, um, carrying things and the lower back, you know, you can raise your arm. I used to be a hairdresser and I'd fall. On, if I fall on the ice, I fall on this <laughs> arm. And so I can like put my arm behind my head to comb your hair, shampoo your hair. Those things that you lose, everybody that talked this morning, I related to everything they had to say mobility wise. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And so that's what I want to be able to take care of myself until I, my mom is 82 years old and she can still do some things, but she has lost a lot in the last five years. And so I want to be able to go all the way taking care of myself. And so that's my big why right now. Wow. And yeah, you know, washing your hair, shampooing your hair, that that is another thing. I totally forgot about that one. But yeah, yeah. If anything going on in your shoulders at all. It's just the, a simple thing of shampooing your hair is hard. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Okay, Miss Val. What about you, sweet one? Okay, my name is Valerie Rausch, but um, on Facebook, I'm known as Valiant Val. Um, and when I was thinking about my why, I really found a quote earlier this year that I like. And my word, um, Jamie, I have a word I do every year too, is renew. And the quote I like is from Louise Hay. And it's, she says, I choose to make the rest of my life the best of my life. <clears throat> and like so many people that when we watch their transformation videos, um, they've come from all different places, you know, emotionally, mentally, physically, so many different challenges. And mine mostly have been physical and emotional. Um, I had spinal fusion surgery in 2005, three levels. I'm currently herniated on two levels, which is affecting some of my mobility presently. <clears throat> two shoulder surgeries, um, an Achilles tendon surgery, um, and then when I went through menopause, I gained so much weight and um, I could go on with physical stuff, but um, we've, we've, like we said, that we, we can all relate to things other people have said. Um, one of my biggest goals is to lose weight. Um, my husband misses his wife of 75 pounds ago, and that's been really hard for me to hear from him. So... Um, I want to get down on the floor with my grandkids and um, be able to play with them as I age. So there's a lot of different reasons for me. Um, I'm just very thankful for the opportunity and um, looking forward to the rest of my life being the best of my life. Oh, wow, Belle. Oh, my word. You know, that, that weight mm -hmm. deal, too. I honestly didn't get started for weight. I had no mobility. I had lost it over nine years and I just wanted to walk again. But however, with the journey, I automatically was losing the weight. So I went from the time that I weighed on a scale, I was like 250.5. But the day before I was four pounds heavier, I just didn't get it documented. And honestly, I'm not really sure how high it actually was at that time frame that nobody ever gets on a scale, right? So I was uh, way up there. So in the 10 months when I lost the 80 pounds, I was like, wow, I liked myself at all weight spots. I have to be honest, but wow. When you realize that you can walk again and have a life, Valerie, that's the thing. It's like, you're saying the grandkids weight does change what, how we can interact with them too. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful. Oh my word. Okay. So we're going to run it. Uh, because this is Wellness Wednesday, you guys, I absolutely would love for people to know from your from your perspective, where where were you at before health became important to you? Where were you at with your nutrition pillar? And then kind of where you're thinking you're heading next so they can get a perspective of, of where you've come from and where you're headed. Go ahead, Gord, if you don't mind going first. No, not at all. Oh. I've been a career cook in a restaurant for the last 42 years. So anyone that's ever worked in the industry knows that means you're working while most people are eating. You're surrounded by crap 
all the time. And when you do get to eat, it's called eating on the fly. Mm. You're eating while working. Uh, my nutrition was crap. Absolutely atrocious. Uh, nine years ago, ten years ago, I had a stroke. And I started getting a little more serious. Uh, arthritis equals no more gluten. Uh, actually, yesterday I was just told that I have carpal tunnel in both my hands. Yay me. So I am now completely gluten-free, except for when I have to try something at work that I'm cooking. Unfortunately, I can never go completely 100% gluten-free. You have to taste what you're cooking. Uh, I am lactose intolerant, so I'm almost completely dairy-free. And I... Suck at nutrition. That was my worst course. I really need to buckle down and go a little deeper into it. I'm going to break out my uh, textbooks again, bone up on it, follow the Canadian uh, health guide. Uh, yes, I'm Canadian. And uh, oh. see what I can do. I've eliminated most nightshades. So that's my next phase is to get a little more serious into it. Lord, we need to talk later because I'm Canadian too, but I live in Denver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, Val. You're Canadian. Oh. I'm cool. Yay. Oh. I'm in the nation's capital. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm here in Ottawa. So at least the whole gluten dairy free thing you, with DDPY, you do have access to great recipes that all take you that direction too so that's awesome that's just awesome that you at least yeah. have figured that yeah. out right you know yeah well doesn't like i i had to have some gluten earlier in the week something i was cooking i had to try it and the next day wow it was like a bus hit me isn't that amazing you know, mm. yeah all my joints my knees yeah so I know what to watch for now. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of us have those joint issues and we can only do so much with the workouts that it's going to make a difference. And the other part is everything yeah. that goes in our mouth. Yeah, that would be hard as a cook though. At a yeah. Show. yeah, that would be a whole different ball game. Yeah. Well, also the easiest, quickest thing to eat is something deep fried, which I'm trying to avoid as much as humanly possible now. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Well, we'll be anxious to see how your journey evolves on the challenge this year, how you find a way to still, because we all have to live our regular life, right? And just find a way to modify on our own journey. So it'll be great to yeah. hear how you manage to get through all that this year. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Wow. Well, Bob, what, what do you want to share with us about where where you were and where you're headed with your nutrition pillar. Well, my, um, I, I mentioned I was a 30 year, I was a 30 year meat cutter. Yeah. And the first thing that I learned as a meat cutter was I better know how to cook what I'm selling. And so that was, that was the first thing they told me as an apprentice. Do you know how to cook this? No, you better find out fast. So I learned how to cook a whole lot of things and it was all revolving around meats. Um, so I didn't get a lot of vegetables in, uh, <laughs> needless to say. Um, when I got sick, um, one of the uh, um, doctors that was world renowned um, came out with an MS diet and she not only was it an MS diet, but it's actually for anyone that has a neurological problem or um, has fibromyalgia or um, just a variety of different diseases and um, how much it would help. And it was plant based. Um, so needless to say, I had to. Um, reconsider how I was eating. Um, uh, before I ate anything that I wanted in, like Lord, a lot of it was fried because if you're a meat cutter, you're also eating on the run. You don't have time to sit. Um, 
So I ate a lot of fried foods. I ate a lot of fast foods. Uh, I ate a lot of things I wasn't supposed to. Um, uh, fast forward now, um, basically, I'm more or less on the Whole30 diet. Sure. Yeah. Okay. A Whole30 diet is a lot like what Dallas does. Yes. Uh, it's gluten-free, gluten um, dairy-free. Um, I'm dairy-free as much as I can stay away from cheese. That is my Achilles heel. Um, um, but um, I eat a, um, now a portion of, uh, I grow my own chicken wow. um, and process my own chickens in my backyard. And so I've always got a freezer full of chickens. And um, if you can find somebody that um, you can get free range gluten free chickens or, uh, non-gmo chickens that's they're they're a great protein source and that and a lot of vegetables um two-thirds of my plate is uh, vegetables now and i tried to stay away from the fried food but it, man it it pulls you back in <laughs> it really does um but you know my goal is to to be able to talk to people that have um these um that have flare-ups like I have and be able to tell them, you know, it's the exercise is great, but what you put in your mouth is everything. So um, I don't know. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at now. Wow. You know, this doesn't feel very accidental that you guys were the ones that ended up on the well wellness Wednesday panel, because these, these are some pretty serious stuff that, um, you know, that we all face. And I, seriously my husband and i live in an adult resort community most of them say i don't want to cook anymore pam i cooked my whole life i'm over it and i'm thinking well good for you but that means everything you're eating is out there and that was all for me what bob you talk about that quick stuff well you guys talk about the fried stuff it is almost i think an epidemic for seniors that they want everything easy now. And they so they're all choosing to go out of the kitchen. And I think we're going to have to fight our way back into creating a habit in our kitchen, right? Well, I think the biggest problem is not just the fried food, but if you look at the amount of sodium that we mm -hmm. take in, yep. uh, and the, the sodium is, uh, it's a silent killer. Yeah. yeah. It really is. And, and you go, uh, my, my, my daughter works at a place called Mama's Grill. It's a family owned restaurant and it's a wonderful restaurant. I wish they didn't serve so much grease and so much salt though, because every time I go in there, uh, that's all I could, you know, if I get something, that's all I can taste, you know? So it's, I don't know. It, and so if you go outside of the home, that's what you get, you know, scary. So it is about trying to make more choices at home that we know are safe or find places out there that are, that we know make a little better choices in the kitchen of the restaurant and give you some choices. But okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, Candace, what are, what are your thoughts? Where did you come from and where are you headed towards in your nutrition pillar? Well, in my mid thirties, I started to become more health conscious. Um, I've always said I'm, I'm a professional dieter. Because I've been overweight since uh, second grade, pretty much. I think this is crazy. I was a premature baby in the 70s, and my formula to help me gain weight was canned milk and K Rose beer. So I just messed up my taste buds forever because, you know, I like and all that but I tried to be more health conscious keep weight under control in my mid-30s when I right before I turned 40 I joined Weight Watchers and did pretty well with that and got more health conscious than you know whole foods and that but then when I started all this with that my main form of exercising was doing walk at home video because I could get up at five o'clock and do my, my three miles in the morning in the living room and never have to leave the house and get ready to go to work and go on my day. Well, I couldn't do that. I could barely walk up the 
steps, much less do a, a, a walk at home video. I couldn't, couldn't walk 10 feet, much less a mile. You know, it was crazy. Um, so when that started, uh, my eating just went, you know, downhill. I got very depressed. Um, the more depressed I got, the more I ate, the more I ate. Right again, the more, then the more depressed I got. So it was a very, very bad cycle. Um, but once I started with the actually before, right before I started with DDPY, I started researching anti-inflammatory diets because uh, I I'm eat up with I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, I have hypothyroidism, and I have arthritis just about everywhere. Um, my C-reactive protein, which is the blood test that measures the amount of inflammation in your body was 15, which is three times higher than it should be. When I right, I think I got got that done like in June, uh, May or June before I started DDPY, and I was like, I've got to do something about this, or I'm never going to lose weight. So my doctor eventually put me on an anti-inflammatory to help me, um, and I it got down to like eight with the anti-inflammatory. And after I'd been on it for a year. My doctor was like, no, this can cause problems with your with your uh, kidneys or your liver, so let's take you off of it and see how you do. So it went back up to nine, but he didn't want to put me back on it. So Stephanie Kelly actually challenged me to do gluten and dairy-free uh, for a while and see how that goes. Okay, I'm um, trying to say I'm taking it out. Um, immediately, within just like, a day, I could tell uh, my joints didn't hurt as bad, getting around pretty good and feeling better. Well, after about six months of that, I had my C-reactive protein hectic, and it was two, which is well within the normal range of what it should be. Um, currently, I'm gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free about probably 90% of the time, but I want to try to go more closer to a hundred percent of the time because I can feel it if I eat gluten or dairy or sugar, I can feel that my in my joints it's crazy. It starts in my thumbs. My thumbs hurt so so bad. And then it goes to everywhere else. So there is a lot to be said for the gluten free and dairy free and sugar free um lifestyle you know it needs to be a lifestyle change and i'm working toward making this more of a 98 to 100 percent kind of change just you know, not only for me but for my family as well cool cool well i'm sure there's people hearing this that are thinking wait a minute you guys didn't tell me that i'd have to walk away from all the gluten and the sugar and how would i even be at a family gathering and all that stuff but but really if you're hearing what candace says she was in such pain and so miserable that if your body is telling you it's unhappy, it is about you take a journey that also is about your nutrition. And for all of us, there will be a little different journey that you'll take. But if you're talking Hashimoto and um, uh, thyroid, those are some serious health issues. And I, all of us that are seniors are hopefully having blood work done my husband's every six months because of his things. I just take a physical once a year, but it will tell us some things that are kind of important to listen to. So, but it isn't about one specific story, you guys, but um, Candace is one that found her way to what she needed. And I'm so happy for you, Candace, because uh, you're now walking in more victory because of it, right? So that's powerful. What about you, Jamie? Where was your previous nutrition pillar and where do you think you're heading oh you know so in my you know as a teenager as a 20s 30s even 40s I eat everything and anything drank way too much diet pop until my body told me that diet pop wasn't bad because if I drank diet pop 20 minutes later as I was in the bathroom so but then it's been a journey you know like I, I've done keto I've done low carb and they just didn't seem sustainable long term and especially when you have a family, I have four kids. I had, you know, I raised four kids. They're all adults now. And when you're cooking for, and I cook, um, I was a homeschooler. I homeschooled my kids for 12 years. And so we are home and we're self-employed. And so I'm running a business homeschooling, but then I'm still gardening. And I'm, I'm one of those rare people that 
I cook probably 80 to 90% of our meals. And as my husband and I have gotten older and we've started cutting things out, I've cut sugar out of my life. Almost, almost, I probably say 98% of the time. And if I have sugar, I can tell because I want to take a nap about 15 minutes later. Exactly. Or even if I have like a, a glass of wine with my husband or a friend, I want to take a nap later. <laughs> and so I am one of, I'm fortunate where I live. I have, um, we have pretty much gone, we're not gluten free and dairy free because cheese is my downfall. But I have a friend that has a micro dairy, certified organic dairy. So I make my own, I've started making my own cheese. Wow. So that's a process. Yeah. And then I make sourdough bread. And so, but I can tell when I have commercial wheat product that, yeah, no, my body doesn't like the commercial stuff. It does better with the organic flour and stuff. And, and I may have to go, because when I did low carbon keto, I did lose weight. And that's, that is one of my big, you know, one of another thing that I work, need to work on, obviously, but, but it takes a lot of time, but we have come to the conclusion there's like very few restaurants that we will eat out at anymore because of what you said, the sodium, and they don't taste good and stuff. And what you cook at home tastes so much better. And so between my gardening and, you know, cooking, I say, uh, I cook all the time. I'm always cooking. It seems like that's where I'm moving. And, you know, I, <laughs> my husband's been having some stomach issues. I never thought I'd see him not eat bread. But he's like cut out most of the bread in his life. And I'm like, okay, wait, <laughs> we're not eating the bread fat. So I haven't made bread for a week or so. So we'll see. That's where I'm going. It's evolving, you know, and I've made rules like I don't drink pop anymore. You know, you know, I don't eat certain chocolates anymore. If I eat chocolate, I find a really good dark chocolate. And so mm. I put those rules in my life that you can't have that, Jamie. Your body just doesn't like it. And so that's where I'm moving. And it's like, I used to, I grieved when I gave up my diet, cherry Pepsi, I grieved You're like, Oh yeah, I would live. I was addicted to it. I know it. And I grieved when I, and I have, I, I can see it over the, over the, the last five years when I've like given up a food going, Jamie, your body doesn't like that. You just face the fact and move on. There's a grieving process. So when you have to change your lifestyle, mm -hmm. Yes, the inner child in me wants to lay down on the floor and kick and have a tantrum, but it's like, okay, get up and let's move on. And that's where I am, you know, moving on, you know, and, and, and I thought it when you said, you know, it's like when I just said, okay, I can do this talk this, this day, this night. And I thought, oh, that's funny that it's nutrition because, because Dallas, I think Dallas says it too. And I've heard it before is you can't out, out exercise a bad diet or eating too much. I have a problem with portion control. Yeah. And so I have started eating on like the little plate uh -huh. and you cannot, this is one of my new rules. You can only have one serving. You can't go back for seconds because yeah. I can still, cause I do intermittent fasting. I do an 18, six intermittent fasting and I can still out eat my intermittent fasting. <laughs> yeah. Cause if I'm not losing weight, I'm eating too much. And so, so now it's like, okay, you need to, I'm always trying, I'm always like, okay, you got to clean up your diet some more, Jamie. <laughs> and there's always, there's always a next step. And I, uh, I've been kicking and screaming, going dairy free and gluten free, but I may move there. We'll see. Yeah. You know, and it, it's not like you would never have it again. It's not like I never have a cookie. There's cookies. You can make cookies. And I do, if I'm going to have a cookie, I've got to take the time to bake it. So it doesn't happen the whole lot. <laughs> Oh yeah. You know, I usually end up buying like a sugar-free chocolate or something that, you know, like a Lily chocolate or something, if I want some chocolate, because that chocolate is still something I really love. Yeah. So well, that's okay. where I'm going with my nutrition. Yeah. In the challenge, there is so much knowledge that's placed out there for all of us regarding all the different choices of uh, nutrition things. Right. And yeah. if you listen to yeah. Champ Candy, she is one that has to have volume eating. She's one that I got to feel like there's a lot there when I'm eating. Yeah. And and so her one of her go-tos is spaghetti squash. So I too do a spaghetti squash about twice a week and one for my husband and one for me because it's it looks like so much stuff in the bowl. Yeah. You know, and so it's just about adding the right spaghetti sauce and stuff, but yeah. 
volume eating, if you know that's who you are, that's just totally great because you go that direction. And then additionally, just um, just know it's a process. I think you guys probably all heard one, one of the times a few weeks back, I interviewed one of our men in the 55 plus, and he specifically, he's dropping weight and feeling better, healthier, but he was one of those that took a huge bowl of ice cream and all the stuff on it. That was his pattern. So his pattern right now is he buys ice cream, like sandwiches, things that are like six in a pack, a box, right? So he yeah. just gets one kind of a ice cream thing out of the, which really that that's huge progress, right? If oh, that's your yeah. thing, just take a baby step some direction and work your way towards what you know your body's probably telling you to get to, right? So or the, I, yeah, you are. Or I don't even buy. If I buy something like a treat like that, you know, there's places like I love cheesecake, and if I'm going to have a sweet treat, they have like two pieces of cheesecake in the freezer section, and so I can buy that. And there's one for my husband and one for me. But that's been a long time since I've done that. But that's what we do. We buy just enough. I don't have, I don't have chips or pop or anything in our house. So it's not easy. I have to go get it if I want it. And so that deters me too. A powerful tip right there, you guys. If yep. you have to go out and get it, you can even talk yourself out as you're driving and say, well, you know what, maybe I don't need it after all. But what about you, Val? Where have you come from in your nutrition pillar and kind of moving towards Sure. Um, I'm the oldest of seven. So uh, being raised in the, the 60s, not a lot of discretionary income. So I became a volume eater because if you didn't eat when it was put in front of you, you didn't get more down the road. Um, not much snacking. Um, so Growing up, I never struggled with my weight. It wasn't until, like I mentioned, menopause that I really started to struggle. And I also have PCOS, so that's added some challenges. But um, never really worried about what I ate until then. And since then, Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, vegan, keto, I've tried many, many different things. And this last year, sadly, I lost my mom to cancer. And it was during that period of time i realized i'm also an emotional eater so you add emotional eating and volume eating and it's not a good combination um so moving forward i've done a lot of reading and where i think i'd like to head um is to basically eat whole clean foods um not into any extreme but what i've sort of come to the conclusion of is that it's the processed foods that are making our our kind of, you know, citizens sick. Um, it's what we do to the foods. So what we put on the foods. So to eat as cleanly as I can, whole, yes. you know, natural, plant-based, probably for the most part. We have a good source for grass-fed organic beef. So once in a while we do that. But um, just eating as clean, cleanly as possible is where I'm headed. And I did forget to mention I'm 64, almost 65. Oh, just a little young mm -hmm. girl. <laughs> it's amazing my mom was 95 and passed away this last year as well but mm -hmm. I think to myself you guys wow you know I got 30 years if I can go that long I got over 30 years to think of what am I going to do with this season of my life the next 30 right so it does mm -hmm. matter that we start to feel better and if the food is really the pillar that's going to make us feel better in the next 30 years of our life that does kind of to matter so i'm telling you what you guys have been phenomenal very transparent i appreciate it because you're each one of you represent a different thought process and just before we close i'd love if there's any last comment you want to tell our 55 plus family um go ahead and tell them go ahead gord you you first if there's anything you want to close with a thought yeah don't let other people's limits on you limit you I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to do something, do it. We all have heard the words mod, modify, and do what you want to do. That's how you stay young. That gave me goose pimples right there. That's pretty powerful. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. What about you, Bob? Any closing thought for the 55 plus? Um, 
similar to what Gord said, um, I, I have learned uh, hard lessons over the last couple of years because I've had a lot of setbacks. Um, and um, uh, I've something that DDP said on uh, the Monday, Monday motivational talk a couple of weeks ago, uh, probably about a month ago, uh, he could have hit me with uh, one of those chops that he does across the chest with it because it was – it finally sunk in that I don't have to be running um, a thousand miles an hour um, full throttle with my hair on fire every day. And, and that I can give myself permission to back up just a little bit um, and, and allow myself to, uh, uh, to heal, let my body heal a little bit. And then, then I can pick it back up and run with it again. So, um, but at the same time, I'm always striving towards a goal. So we're always striving towards a goal, but we don't have to be doing it at a thousand miles an hour every day. So just my thought. That's cool. Cause you're offering yourself some grace and mercy, right? Give it to yourself. Absolutely. Patience with everyone else. We should have it with ourselves. That's powerful, Bob. Powerful. What about you, Candace? Any closing thoughts? One of my most favorite quotes is from Walt Disney, and the short version is keep moving forward. Um, I've had, you know, a lot of setbacks. I'm still not at my goal weight, and I've been doing this two and a half years. I've had in a couple of injuries and just, you know, different things. I couldn't push myself as hard as I wanted to, or maybe I got injured because I pushed myself harder than I needed to. But the whole thing is just, you know, don't give up and just keep trying to do something and just keep moving forward and you're going to get there eventually one day at a time exactly right that's good, that's good that's stuff good. oh my gosh what about you jamie any closing thoughts um i uh a model of mine that i've adopted the last few years is something done is better than nothing done so like wednesday that i woke not wednesday Monday, I woke up and thought, oh, I really don't want to do, I don't want to work out today, but oh, just do a short one, do a little one. And so I did a little one and it was like, okay, that was good. So something done is better than nothing done. And Dallas is in my head with, if you think you can, you can, if you think you can't, you can. So <laughs> I caught myself saying, I can't do that. And I was like, oh, wait, Jamie, you can't say you can't do that. You have to change your mind. You can do this if you want to. It's if you want to do this, you're yeah. choosing not to do it. If you don't, if you don't think you can do it. Yeah. Well, I have people that reach out to me uh, that want to get started and they'll, they'll say, but, but Pam, I've got to wait a little bit longer because I want to wait till I can give it a hundred percent. And I always come back with them. There's nothing in life that we give a hundred percent to. So no, if you're waiting no, to you a hundred percent on your exercise and a hundred percent on your eating right you are never going to get started so yeah, yeah. You're right, Jamie. it's take where you're at and just keep making those baby steps right yep keep moving uh, forward yep okay well you, you get to take it on home girlfriend <laughs> well there was something i heard ddp say and it was um own the voice in your head and yes. It just makes me think I'm not fighting the old stuff in my life, the baggage that I carry, but to focus on building the new and making plans for that and taking it one day at a time. I'm sort of a, I like to take a challenge on and take it with both hands, but at the same time, you were talking about extending mercy and grace to ourselves, not getting discouraged when you trip up, but owning, owning the, the failures, but also embracing the, the change. So, yeah, just moving forward, making the rest of my life the best of my life. Well, you guys are all so powerful. I can't <clears> wait <throat> to have you back when we go further down the journey this year. I'd love to have you guys all back and give updates. Are we looking at a cute cat there at Gordon's house? I'm cat envious. <laughs> yes. Shoot. That is my daughter's rescue cat that I had to rescue. <laughs> Yeah, we we all get that, right? Our kids 
want <laughs> an animal and then we see the animal forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank yeah, you wow. so much. Seriously, you have you have inspired me and I know it's going to empower many others in our family to just just look at a little bit more this year and join us and run beside us, right? We're not ahead of someone or behind someone. We're running together. So bless you all for coming on and being so transparent. And we didn't get to see Bob's face, but you get to see his picture is just below here where the video is. <laughs> Bob, thank you guys. Love you so much.